Okay, so we're just gonna wait a little while here. Um, I'm trying to record this in as many places as once. So hold with me here. Hopefully the audio is coming through. We know at least two people uh, have the ability to call in to this magic number. We'll see if anyone does. Otherwise, we'll eventually just turn down this music and pipe it into a headphone or something in case someone actually calls. Kind of groovy music. This music is brought to us from uh, what is this place again? Oh yeah, free. Freeconferencecall.com. Uh, free nice relaxing music, I think. It's kind of repetitive though. After a while. We'll give people about 15 minutes to decide if they want something uh, to come from this. I'd like to turn this into, oh, we have one comment, even though we have no one watching. Oh, we have one person watching. Will that person join in is the question. So a question from the... Facebook is, is this me playing? No, this is not me playing. It's just a uh, whole music. Just tuning in. We're just waiting to see if any of the people, the invited people, uh, actually show up. Because this is eventually going to hopefully turn into some kind of a conversation. Uh, that this is ideally coming through audio-wise, both the music and the uh, speaking. 
Oh, oh, another comment. Uh, we were playing music of a different kind a little while ago, but uh, in any case, uh, the internet connects us all, and along with old music, it allows us to do other things. And I'd like to experiment with some of those other things. Uh, I might need a little bit of extra equipment to do it. We'll see as uh, time goes by. But the basic idea here is that even with just messing around, I'm sure we've had like a half dozen people, uh, their attention peaks a little bit, just going, what the hell is Jeff doing? And what is this uh, old music in the background, this video? And Facebook, which is where this is currently being broadcast, isn't a great medium, but it does allow for real-time audio and maybe video. And uh, even if you're not kind of actively on it, it could even work as kind of like a background listening thing. Uh, I've seen other people do successful things with uh, recording protests and the, the, the co-op strike with, with their strike uh, picketers and the picket line. So there, there are things you can do. Uh, and hopefully this is going to be one of them. And so I don't think anyone is actually going to show up here, which is kind of disappointing. But hey, okay, uh, I kind of roll with uh, what other people's schedules are sometimes. So, we'll wait another like six minutes and then we'll try to salvage things as a one man show. But, uh, hopefully, this old music isn't driving uh, you out there crazy. I think it's kind of relaxed. Oh. 
actually going to show, which is too bad, but like I said, sometimes you have more than that. I've still got the, the, the music, uh, hold music in my ear, but you guys won't. So hopefully I'm coming through okay. Um, when I was recording earlier, this level seemed to be about right. And we're going to find out whether that is actually true um, pretty quick. Uh, I've also got another... Well, so hopefully this is recording. This is episode two. No guests today. Thank you. 
Facebook webcam. Uh, so, as some of you may have noticed on my YouTube channel, there was a video posted last week around this time uh, about the shutdown of Rant Radio and how this left kind of a void in uh, not just my life, but the, the life of the internet. The, the, there, there's this space for people to be talking that is just not filled. So um, hopefully, uh, using all the technology that, uh, that so many people have surrounded themselves with, uh, we can start to connect people in a different and new way. Uh, this is uh, different than last week in that this week, I've got this Facebook live video stream going on, so we'll see how that works. Uh, if you are hearing this, then you're probably listening to it on Facebook. So uh, if you are, you can you know, say stuff on the chat. I will be monitoring that. But I also uh, have uh, Ricochet. Uh, you can also install Ricochet by going to ricochet.im, that's R-I-C-O-C-H-E-T dot I-M, and uh, you can add me uh, at ricochet colon M for Mountain, S-Z-I-S, M for Neptune, A-F, 7, B, Q, Q, P, H, R, and B for Delta. Uh, if you add ricochet into the colon in front of that, you'll get my username there. Uh, maybe I'll just post that into the the chat here. Um, I'm not sure if everyone gets the chat, but in any case, uh, I, ideally this this is going to be a weekly thing, and I'm going to try to make a point to every Sunday around this time, uh, so about 6.45 or 7, uh, having something for you guys to watch and listen to. Um, one of the things that I complain a lot about online uh, is Netflix, and the Motion Picture Association of America and Disney and all these big media companies that are doing these terrible things. But you could reasonably say, hey, well, what am I supposed to watch then? What am I supposed to listen to? What, what am I supposed to do instead? Like, I've got to do something. I've got to watch something. Uh, I've got this big giant TV in my house. I should do something with it. Well, one of the things you can do uh, is we can make something, right? And so th this... I. I, I'm kind of uh, biased towards audio, uh, but who knows? Maybe we can make something video-wise, too. Uh, we've got videos everywhere. There is like, you know, like how many thousand video cameras per square foot now um, in bigger cities, uh, or maybe square mile, I guess. Uh, but like, uh, there's cameras around. We should be able to put some kind of a, a, a combination of audio and video together. Uh, so. In any case, uh, I, I noticed this week, uh, as I was uh, going through my week, uh, that I listen to a lot of podcasts and a lot of YouTube and a lot of you know, streams of things online um, as I go through my week. And some of it I'm paying attention to. Some of it is just sort of in the background as I'm doing things, as I'm doing math or programming or whatever. Um, but it just sort of struck me, and th this is something that I've noticed this week, is that over the long haul of my life, uh, there seems to be more and more to listen to, and more and more to, uh, to watch, but certainly to listen to. And there are a lot of podcasts out there. There are a lot of things to listen to. And I found that I'm spending more and more time listening to things and kind of less and less time interacting with other people directly. Uh, now, it's not, it's not like a one-to-one -one thing, but uh, I'm, I'm starting to wonder if it isn't just me, if, if there's uh, kind of a broader uh, conversation that we're not having uh, because we're the way that we're having the conversation uh, more and more is that these recorded streams or these live streams, um, there, there are uh, certainly the more famous people online uh, have all these people listening to them and, and engaging with them. 
Uh, and I, I'm, I'm starting to wonder now if that's like a how conversation or more and more conversation is going to go, uh, where we have the what we mean by conversation is this sort of broadcast and then the, the feedback to these broadcast mediums. Uh, that, that's just sort of uh, off the cuff, but it, it, it would be uh, like the, the day to day life. Uh, there are things that we have to do. We have to go to the store. We have to buy things. Uh, we have to pay our rent. With, you know, the, in all of our lives, there are these things. You know, go to work, uh, have people at work that we have to talk to. Uh, but a lot of it is being automated. And you know, the, you go to the grocery store, and you can deal with the, the, the machines now instead of a human being at the till. You can. There are these little bits and pieces that are being cut out of what we normally have conversations. And same thing with work. Like a lot of work is starting to be put on the computer, right? It's, and it's not like we, we haven't had to, to use computers before or haven't had to deal with newspapers or other kind of media to communicate with. But uh, it does seem that one of the things that we're cutting out is the, the, the sort of person to person live interaction as we cut more and more over to this mediated environment and social mediated environment. Anyway, uh, so that, that was the, the first thing. This, the second thing is uh, the one of the goals that would be nice here uh, would be to have a an actual ice cast station broadcasting on the dark web. And I've seen one or two, but I'm starting to wonder if there's a space for that. So I, I, I met someone this week who's an old DJ from Toronto. Uh, he thought that there would be people interested in, and certainly he'd be interested in putting some content on that. So uh, if, if that's something that might interest anyone, definitely let me know. Kind of thinking in the back of my head on that one. Uh, then on top of that, uh, what about you guys who are listening right now? Uh, there should be about two of you, or, or one of you. Um, and what would you like? If you had the option of hearing something or talking about something, what, what is it that you would want to hear on a weekly thing? Um, what would you like me to rant about for a little while? Uh, Feel free to type it into the little text box or send me a message or something. Uh, there is that. So that because it's just something I'm doing off the, off the cuff here, we could go in a lot of different directions. And just because nobody else is here um, kind of gives a little bit more freedom to do that. Okay, so then we've got the idea of this radio station on the dark web. We've got uh, the, the sort of mediated world we, we live in. What else can we do here? Um, the, so one of the things that's come up this week a lot uh, is the uh, world that... Let me start this. Okay, so if you're listening to this on Facebook, uh, the a lot of Facebook is put together with JavaScript. And Facebook, the way that it's put together with JavaScript, it's actually put together it's specifically designed to thwart uh, ad blockers and to make it difficult for you to cut out the ads that Facebook tries to give you, uh, both on your home feed and on other places. Um, and so it's, it's been a cat and mouse game between the ad block uh, software and Facebook. So if Facebook uh, adds a new kind of ad, the ad block so software keeps the developers for it, both free uh, software volunteer developers and paid developers, um, figure out what Facebook is doing, and then they will um, put a fix to, to remove that ad, and then Facebook kind of steps up, up a notch, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to the point where Facebook is just loaded so deep with JavaScript right now. And I'm finding 
day to day that it is starting to get slow for me. And granted, I use Tor, so a lot of that slowness is coming from just loading thousands and thousands and thousands of bits of this code from Facebook. But at the same time, it's the reason that it's slow isn't necessarily Tor itself. It's this this battle between uh, the the people who want to see ads and the pe people who want to see, want us to see ads and the people who are working to keep us from having uh, our lives bombarded with ads. And so that that's uh, one one kind of line in the, the world uh, going back to the this idea that we're we're being mediated in what used to be our private conversations all over the place. Uh, when we're mediated by uh, pro or for-profit companies like Facebook, they have the option a lot of the times to use that to their advantage, to, to give us ads, to not just have ads that we can see and have our time wasted and our visual space wasted and our ability to process our environment wasted, but uh, in, in the case of ads on, anytime you see ads on a computer, it's probably not just you looking at that ad, the ad is also looking at you. And so, uh, the, the the bigger question of like uh, how where where do we want to go with this uh, might involve making spaces that we control uh, that aren't um, dependent on this JavaScript uh, that aren't dependent on Facebook so. When I'm recording this, uh, I, I did put a little bit of time into trying to make it uh, live on other platforms, uh, but it will be available on all the other platforms after the fact. So if you'd like a copy of this and or last week's uh, episode, uh, you can either ask me directly and I'll send it to you by somewhere, or uh, YouTube will have it. Of course, YouTube is just as bad. But, uh, Tons of spyware and crackware going on in the background, but uh, I'd like to know if you're aware of anything else that's out there that stuff that this kind of episode can be put on. I know Steam is promising. Uh, I think DTube is based on Steam. Um, I've heard something about a, a, a DTube. I haven't checked that out yet, uh, but it would be if we could just get into the habit of having a place where we can put stuff uh, that isn't ad-based, uh, that would be great. Um, but what, why, why bring this up, though? The, the reason I'm bringing this up is because the it, there's just a sort of habit uh, that because websites like Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and Google are loading so heavy on the, the JavaScript that there is a tendency of People who have other websites to, to just throw up JavaScript that is uh, incredibly complicated, complicated, and that a lot of it's built on you know other JavaScript that's built on other JavaScript that is you know, huge code bases and lots of media, lots of scripts going on in the background. Because oh hey, if, if the people on the web are willing to go to Facebook, then ours isn't as bad as Facebook, so we can uh, kind of just expect that it's okay. Um, and so I've been trying to get Ethereum uh, code working. And that, what that is entailing is going through some of the code, the JavaScript code, to try to make sense of it and understand it, uh, maybe audit it a little bit. Um, but there's, there's so much. And even after like four or five years of going through this, um, maybe more so this past year, uh, but I, I, I'm just like at the bottom of the mountain. Stuff. There's so much left to go, uh, and it isn't even a theory. Code. It's, it's just like um, lot, even the open source stuff is just built so much stuff built on top of each other, and so many people are just taking it and running it without knowing what it does, without going through the code, without understanding it at all. That uh, it, it, it's a recipe for disaster, and there has been uh, at least one instance. Uh, that I found where there was something put in the code uh, 
And because people weren't looking at it and they weren't trying to kind of piece it together, uh, it was able to uh, steal people's Ethereum because the, the Ethereum developers just sort of uh, assumed that their dependencies were of uh, these, these JavaScript uh, programs that uh, or, or libraries that they were using were going to be legitimate. And uh, those libraries and programs that they were built on did the same thing with other libraries and programs. And you know, somewhere down the tree, there was a dishonest actor. And people had their, their theory ripped off of them. So uh, it's, it, it's kind of sad that we have this situation where it's, we've kind of got this huge house of cards on the internet right now where so much JavaScript, so much is built on top of each other. And a lot of it is, there, there, you know, it was a project that somebody did for a while and then has since abandoned it. And there's all this abandoned code and not enough people to kind of go back and look at it and make sure it works, make sure it can continue to work. Uh, they've been changing the language that is JavaScript. And some of these, these libraries are going to be have to be updating at some point to to take advantage of that. Um, backwards compatibility is not going to be around for that. So it's uh, something that we're going to have to, uh, on some level, solve. But it would be nice if there was kind of more of an organized approach. I mean, I'm I'm putting myself into it, but I can I'm only one person. I can only do so much. Um, so. There's that, uh, but the, the, what, that, going back to Facebook though, like in, internally, I'm sure they have tests that they run that they can um, figure out what what all the code is doing. But because they're not fully open source, it, that isn't really exposed. So uh, it would be nice to have more people kind of aware of all how much of what Facebook is. Um, oh, we lost our viewer. I think we're live, but no viewers anymore. Hmm, interesting. Uh, so, like if, if there was more, uh, more of a space where you could go, where you could actually understand what Facebook is doing on the back end, or alternative media to Facebook. So like, for example, the Fediverse, um, where you, like the whole platform is unlike Facebook open source. So you could have a community to go to just to, to learn about how, uh, say, look, that was Florona, 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 uh, exactly how that works, right? So, uh, like, I, I kind of imagine uh, that it'd be nice to have a, a couple of people kind of go rent a one of the cheaper buildings here in Thunder Bay and have it just purely as a place to go learn about uh, code. Like home base would have kind of been uh, something along those lines, but um, just just to aim it at uh, something like to, you know to replace Facebook. Uh, I, I think that would be a one, one thing that could be possible. One one thing that could be doable uh, is a way of you know, if, 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 if there's a physical place you can go to, or, 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 or at least, you know, somewhere where you could, you could ask them, uh, the, the people in that, this one building, uh, you know, that if you have questions or want to be in, you know, get into it, uh, that there's a place to go. Because that, that, that's one of the problems that I'm kind of experiencing trying to get Ethereum working is that, yes, there's Debian. And yes, Debian's rules are kind of made of but especially out here in the boonies, like there, there's no, you, you can you can chat with them on IRC, uh, but there's so many things that there's there's just no one to ask. And a lot of uh, projects, both open source and not, are going over to Slack. Uh, Slack is a you know worse than Facebook in that you know it's it's, it's got the problem that it's a, it's not an open source platform. It's got the problem that it's a a, a corporation that you know, can control what happens on it. And in fact, like right now, I, I just logged into Slack today and uh, there was no 
like in order to see the the previous days of conversation type of money. And I mean like I am I, I understand that you know companies like Slack need some way of being sustainable, but at the same time, like in the past, that would have been those conversations would have been on a place where the the logs would have been public anyway, right? And so it, it, it's like that they're owning a piece of history now. And if you don't have that money or, or worse, if you if you have you know no way of getting them that money, right? Because like it's it's not like they, they take Bitcoin. It's not like they take some kind of open payment system. They have, you know, the, the PayPal or whatever it is that they take. It's probably it works great in the States and in Silicon Valley where they, they are. But in you know ninety five plus percent of the world, we don't have access to it. So uh, Slack, it's just not going to work uh, for the long term. The you know keeping history working, and so so while that is going on, um, so so it's not the the, the problem of. Uh, it's, it's run by a company. It's not the problem of JavaScript. It's, it's losing history by the way it's constructed. Um, but it, it's also it, it's just a, a, a place where it's, it's tempting to, to bring people in, um, and by bringing people in, exclude other people. So there's that. Uh, don't go to this one. Look that. But anyway, so the. So Slack is, is is becoming kind of a lost cause. Facebook is becoming a lost cause. Um, there is the Fediverse, there is Mastodon, there's the Flo Um I should actually go check that out. Uh, but even of the two people who are watching this uh, while I was kind of paying attention here, neither of them uh, use it. So it, it, it's like there is e even the, the steps that we could be taking. Uh, a lot of people either don't know that it's there, or the people around them haven't made that step yet. So, uh, what can we do? What what can we? Uh, what what steps can we who who are listening to this uh, take to kind of bring people? Uh, away from platforms like Facebook, away from the ever building power of unstable JavaScript, uh, over to something like, uh, well, uh, and, and actually, I mean, Chrome is almost as bad with the number of dependencies that it has. But again, it's at least a, a completely free platform, so you could uh, build kind of a, you know, a building to to bring it to the, to the public. Um, or, or, or a hackerspace or community group or something like that. It's, it's in principle possible. And even if like all the current developers bail on it, um, you, the, the code is there, so you could do it. Whereas with, when Facebook, not yet, but when Facebook goes down, it's going to take so much of our history with it, so much of our social lives with it, um, we'll be lucky if it, it lasts kind of like Google Plus did, which is sort of quietly uh, announces that it's going to go away and then eventually goes away. Um, it, it's entirely possible that Facebook could just have some internal problem and all of it disappear one day. Uh, and I don't think a lot of the people who use Facebook realize how many times on the internet big companies have done that. Like, even I, I seem to remember hearing about one this in this past year with like you know, millions of customers and uh, like like paid customers. And I don't remember off the top of my head what it was, but uh, it was just they didn't keep their backups and poof, they're gone. You know, maybe Facebook keeps better backups than that. You think so? Uh, they're they're kind of uh, big enough that they kind of would have to in order to even run. Uh, but even so, it's it's worth thinking about. So, but back, back to the, the, the kind of JavaScript problem. Then, so there's the other problem on top of that is the um, the idea of the JavaScript trap, which is that when we started using the web, uh, 
the JavaScript was kind of used initially to like just add like little bits of functionality to websites on the, the, the side of the, the, the so the, the so the you you can add like a little pop up or a, a, you know, little flavor or color or something like that, and from that point it was realized that you could add functionality without uh, doing the, the work the, the work of computing that functionality on the server side. So it became popular, more and more people ended up using it. But it's it's, it's been like a long pr progression uh, from like having barely any JavaScript at all to a lot of things are, are kind of like mostly JavaScript at this point. Uh, and it, it's, it's the, the relationship is kind of reversed, where it used to be that uh, web browsers were, uh, I mean, the, the browser itself was a very complicated thing, uh, but the code that it ran was simple. Like websites, uh, you could, as a human being, write the whole website start to finish. Um, and then people started adding like little bits of JavaScript code to it, but you'd still write a lot of the JavaScript yourself. Uh, and then you'd start using kind of, you know, little example, copy and paste codes, whatever. Uh, but the, as we're adding more and more code to it, uh, what the, the browser does is less and less important compared to what that JavaScript does. And so when people are kind of concerned about what their computers are doing, uh, as browsers are getting more and more access to this JavaScript, and as we're you know spending more and more li of our life on this media that's uh, built with JavaScript, uh, we, we have more and more of our life running with this code that's getting more and more and more complicated and harder to understand what it's doing. Like I don't know what all the code in Facebook itself is doing. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of people who, are, who could be listening to this right now don't as well. Uh, and that's starting, I mean, it, it, it's not starting to be a problem, it is by now a problem. Like, we don't, it, it's not just purely functional, it's not just purely uh, doing stuff to, to load the page and to render a feed. We know that Facebook does stuff in the background that uh, is even on the, the, the client side, even on the side of the web browser, that it that it is is related to tracking us, is related to um, messing with our feed in ways that if we could know what they are, maybe we wouldn't be as interested in that of running. But it's impossible to, to separate it out, or, or it's very difficult to separate it out. So like on a kind of normal um, day to day basis, that we are able to kind of control this and. and that that's kind of going to the heart of the you know, one of the bigger problems. Um, you know, Greg did a, a nerd night talk where he kind of considered software to be uh, the, the kind of cho human choices, the choices of the developer are kind of distilled down to this you know, point where like more and more and more choices are, are possible. Um, and you know, then the question becomes well, like you as the computer user, uh, do you consent to these choices? Uh, and with the, the level of JavaScript that's being kind of piled more and more and more on top of it, the amount of choice that we have over what runs and you know, how, how much of, how deep into the stack we even know what's going on, it's becoming more and more difficult to, uh, to, to, to have informed consent. And it, it's unnecessary too, because like a lot of the stuff that Facebook does is just presenting us information that we should have in, in some sense anyway. Right? It's like the information about people in our lives, whether or not they're near us or not. Uh, so how do how do we get that kind of in, informed consent going on? Uh, I mean, it's, it's worth. Like, there's lots of people kind of working on it, but uh, I, I think it's kind of worth thinking about. It. Uh, one of the groups, I, I can't remember if I mentioned them last week or not, but there's a, a group, Open Privacy CA. Open Privacy CA, which is Canadian research group um, that does research into how to get 
more informed consent into the systems that we use. And a lot of it is based on uh, communication platforms. A lot of it's based on um, you know, the, the, the various uh, platforms in our life today. But um, it, it's interesting because a lot of it kind of winds up being a software problem or winds up being a policy problem relating to the, how we think about software. So it's, it, it's interesting that the, the problem of you know, these political problems are resolving to uh, the choices of how the software is designed. So the, the choices we make in designing that software um, enable or don't enable this sort of informed consent of how we interact. So um, yeah, I'll probably drop a link to that. Uh, so, so there's open privacy. Um, there, they do some cool stuff. One of the things that they've built is, or, or at least have uh, helped to support this Ricochet, but I think they've been building a, a newer version of Ricochet. Uh, and I don't know exactly how to pronounce it. It's like CWCH. It's a Welsh term. Lots of consonants and no vowels. But uh, it's basically a, a, a follow up to Ricochet. So uh, a ricochet that will allow the use of group chats. So we can have an actual group chat uh, for these videos, or these, these recordings. And uh, that, that would be nice. I did have an IRC server and chat room set up before uh, today, but today the server went down, or they configured their uh, DNS in a different way. So. Unfortunately, today we don't have access to that. Um, it would be nice uh, to have a, a place like Facebook. Again, it, it's got all the, these problems with it. Um, but more importantly, not everyone is on Facebook. And I, I know for a fact that some people with phones uh, or these have held computers, uh, they, they, if they try to go to Facebook, it forces them to go to the app. Uh, and then because they don't have an account, they don't have access to it because you know, Facebook is kind of forcing them to get an account to get access to it. So it, it's just not an appropriate uh, place to have a chat room where people could talk about a video, a video like this uh, as the only place. Like, I mean, if, if we have Facebook, we may as well use it to our advantage, but the main place that people communicate with um, shouldn't be Facebook. Uh, it should be something where everyone can come in, everyone can be, or at least everyone who is invited can come in. And uh, so IRC works for that, but the problem is finding someone who will run an IRC server that won't just kick everyone who, you know, is part of the Tor network, which I really uh, out by default. Uh, so if we can uh, find someone who is running such a server, that would be great. Uh, like I said, there was someone uh, this past week, who, even up until like a day or two ago, uh, who was running such a server, but it has been shut down. Or is, isn't working right now. We'll see if we can fix that next week. Um, and one of the the cool things with that is that there's no JavaScript involved there. There's no like the the only thing that's sent is text, uh, or or at least there there's a lot of or there's a minimal amount of uh, uh, data set over IRC that isn't just text. So it's a very uh, useful uh, protocol in that sense. Um, but going back to Ricochet and this, this new Quitch or Quitch or whatever you pronounce it, um, it, 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 it's, it, it's a powerful thing. I think we should all be using it. Uh, but someone brought up a good point about it this week in that uh, right now, if you are, you know, a company like Facebook or Google or even like one of the older companies, uh, AOL, let's say, uh, and you decided that, oh, hey, we're going to exclude, uh, I don't know, people who wear red hats. Uh, everyone who wears a red hat is no longer allowed to use this service. Uh, then, you know, we, we might see that and go, okay, well, I don't like people with red hats, but should we really be kicking them all off of our service? Like, it, 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 if we have our conversations from the you know, 
I think our day to day, everything from our day to day conversations to uh, these, these kind of big global conversations, without their input, are we still going to, to make the right decisions? Are we still going to have the right idea? Are we going to converge on the truth? Um, and like I, I would say that the answer is no. Like if, if, if we can get everyone talking together, or at least set up in a way that we could talk, uh, so that if there is something that someone wants to say, that they're able to say it, and have a you know audience of size at least zero, you know, depending on who wants to actually hear their the message, then there, there's this this space uh, for a platform, uh, especially on the internet, where people can talk to each other, uh, be part of a group conversation, and so on. But if you have a conversation with more than like you know, a couple, a couple hundred people, it starts getting noisy. And if you scale it up to the size of like a couple million people, uh, you start needing threaded discussions and, you know, people who are focused in a particular area so that they're only talking about a particular kind of thing. And, uh, if you scale a little bit more, you need something like Reddit, something with feedback uh, to allow people to kind of coordinate large discussions so that only the useful stuff is kind of brought to the surface, but at the same time allowing as that it used to, uh, pretty much anything to occur as long as it's subject to that feedback. Uh, and then you can kind of scale it up and open up. Uh, in, in some ways that maybe it, we haven't hit the point where you know we can have billion person discussions yet, but it would be nice. Um, but anyway, going back to this Ricochet upgrade project, CWH or whatever, um, it, there's no real reason why you couldn't scale that up. And to have conversations uh, bigger and bigger using it. Like, I'm, I'm sure, you know, I don't know what the biggest conversation that anyone's had, it's probably nobody does, but I can't imagine it being more than like 10 people at this point. Uh, but at the same time, you could you could imagine that it could get there. It could get to the point where you have, let's say, a million people in one of these conversations. But the way that it will work is that it will give the people involved on some level an absolute control over who it is and is participating. And so there is this kind of informed consent that anytime you take part in one of these conversations, that it's going to uh, have a definite moderator. Like somewhat based on the, the math of how this is going to work, it's it's re reinventing uh, at, at first you know small chat rooms and then eventually IRC sized chat rooms. And it, who knows, maybe they'll get to the size of Reddit. But it's like we're we're, we're heading to the same problem where we're going to have people kicked out of these chat rooms and excluded. Um, and so that's going to become kind of like a political problem. But the difference between the political problems up until this this platform and, and this platform is that um, there isn't as much ability to for outsiders to um, to, to I don't want to use the word force, but to encourage their inclusion. If you are excluded from the physical space, uh, it is possible to uh, have something like a sit-in, right? Where if you you and uh, a bunch of other people are excluded from a place, so you just go there anyway. And then you have the, the police or the security, whoever the enforcers are, help pull you out. Uh, and Sometimes you can get away with it, sometimes you can't. Sometimes it halts and brings awareness to it, sometimes it doesn't. But um, on digital spaces, this is harder sometimes. Uh, not always impossible. Uh, the bigger the group, the, the harder it is to exclude people, right? Uh, and so there, there's kind of like a level of hope there. But I think that this is something that is going to be coming down the pipe a little bit. Um, it might be worth it to start thinking about it now. Uh, despite how, how you know important of a tool it is, and so I think I think we, we should start kind of switching over to it. I'll be switching over when uh, Ubuntu concludes it personally. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. And I think I might have it. I think the, the Debian hasn't got it yet, and I think I might have been the person who requested it into Debian. Uh, so again, this goes back to okay, well. Um, with Debian, how, how does stuff get into Debian? And the, the answer to that is uh, there's a 
uh, process that they have where you request the software and then someone um, takes that software, makes sure that it's uh, fit for Debian. Uh, and if they are a Debian developer, there's a certain process that they follow. If they're not a De Debian developer, there's another process that they follow. But long story short, the, uh, I've now gotten uh, a good uh, number of requests in their queue. And of their queue, I think they have like 3,000 or 2,800 requests, and like 100 of them are mine. Uh, and there are four things, a lot of things that they should have. Um, some of it is just free software tools, uh, JavaScript components uh, that are involved in building other things. But uh, it's at a certain point, it's like, okay, Jeff, well, you, you, you've asked this project to do so much for you. What are you doing for the project to help them? And so one of the things that I tried to do this week was try to get um, one of their kind of easier packages together uh, so that I could upload it to them and help part, basically part, participate in, in this process. Um, but uh, I noticed right away that they require uh, you to have basically a certain kind of development environment set up, which I don't currently have. Um, but there's also, it, it, it's like, the, it's, it's very finicky. So it's, it's almost like a programming, <laughs> it felt very much like programming in, in terms of, it wasn't like a, a syntax error or a, uh, I, I, I basically sent the software, I uploaded it to the server, and it came back with some kind of an error message. And it was a really obscure error message to me. So I didn't really understand why uh, it wasn't working. And, you know, making the crypto work uh, is kind of fun, but uh, it, it, it's very much like programming. And so I found, at least this week, that there was there's too too many of these kind of uh, details of uh, um, going through the process. Um, I, I was hoping to to participate more and kind of be, start going on and becoming more involved with this, but uh, that did not seem to, to pan out. So. Uh, we'll, we'll see as, as I get kind of more and more of my uh, deeper and deeper into making the hearing work, whether uh, uh, I'm kind of drawn into becoming more involved uh, or not. But, oh, we have a listener. I had a listener for a moment, but I don't see that they're there. So, interesting. Anyway. Uh, we've been going on. I've been, I've been just kind of rambling off the top of my head for, for a little while. So I don't know if the audio is even coming through. You know, it's, it's kind of um, but hopefully it is. And um, th this week was a little bit more rambly than uh, I kind of hoped, uh, given that there, there were there were people that uh, I was hoping like going to do it again. But um, in any case, I'm going to try to end with song. And uh, this is a pretty common song, so uh, hopefully I'm not getting in trouble for, for playing it. And hopefully uh, it's going to come through okay. So uh, if, if you want us to, or if, if you want me to talk about something next week, uh, you know, send me a message somewhere. You can uh, And uh, we'll, we'll try to uh, make something, make a go of this. Let's, let's keep going. Um, I, I don't want to have it be quite as bad. You know, we'll have to next time, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll see uh, how this develops. We'll see you all on Monday.